So this lecture is about display devices and uh, in this session we're going to spend some time on COT devices and in the next session I'm going to discuss about raster and random system and uh, how do we produce colors in uh, color CRT and the two of the session will be on uh, LCD and uh, plasma panels and uh, flat display devices uh, that we're going to see right so the CRT also known as cathode ray tube is a uh, evacuated glass tube right and uh, what you need to know about it is uh, it is made up of a cathode this is why we call it a cathode ray tube and uh, this cathode has a filament inside it here and uh, when current passes through that filament it's going to heat it we have two other anodes and then a special uh, control grid okay special part of it known as control grid then these two anodes that we're going to see and then we have uh, the deflect uh, deflecting plates, vertical and then uh, uh, horizontal deflecting plates and then uh, we have a first coated screen where we have first run it and then a graphite coating on the top so the cathode ray tube is one of the most uh, uh, we can say that most used uh, display device now the main question is how does this display device over here works right so it actually works by producing electron beam and we know that electron produces a certain amount of energy now we're going to see the different stages how these electrons are going to affect the phosphor atoms over here right how they are going to affect that first atom so to start with how does electron is emitted so this is a question so using a bit logic we are using a cathode ray tube and uh, inside the cathode I told you that there is a filament and this filament will be heated how? by passing a current through that filament right? and when this filament is going to heat up some amount of heat energy is transferred to that cathode uh, over here right? normally here the cathode is here right? so passes a cathode that will normally cause it to heat up and uh, electron will boil up and try to be deposited on this and then the control grid which is normally ha it normally has a specific function which we are going to see and again these two anodes and the deflecting plate does play an important role so we have full time to discuss about this display device and it's a very important device now this is how electron is emitted so when current passes through the heating filament and it heats up cathode will also be heated and uh, this will cause the electron to boil off from the cathode right so these are the filament and these filaments are going to heat up and when this filament is going to heat up electrons will boil off and will be def deposited on the cathode which will cause it to normally uh, move on to the screen but still this is a suspense here what does a control grid does and what does the first anode does the second anode does and what are the special names given to them right so how is the intensity of the electron beam controlled now again we have been discussing since the first lecture what is intensity so intensity is normally the amount of energy that is produced now how will be the amount of energy in the electron beam control now if you use a bit logic here we have this part of the metal plate uh, that is known as the control grid what does that control grid does it actually controls the amount of electron beam amount of electron that will be passing through it now one question is how does one thin film of electron beam is produced right because electrons are boils off but how does this become a thin film of electron and go to the phosphor coated screen right so the main thing is uh, the control grid is going to control the amount of electron coming out so how it, is it going to do this is the control grid 
is completely same charge as the, as the electrode. That is, they are negative. And we know that from the concept of physics, when two uh, like charges are going to be together, they are going to normally repel each other. So when these are repelled, some of the electrons are kept back and they won't be going on. So it's very important that this control grid repel a certain amount of electrons. So we need s intensities controlled by how many electron beam are hitting on the screen. And with the control grid, we know that some of the electrons are going to be prevented from going there. Right? So a high intensity will give rise to a better brightness. Because the more electron energy is going to heat up, it's going to produce a brightness. And we are seeing that brightness is uh, normally known as uh, intensity. And sorry for that guy, each time I have to move on to the next slide just to show you, but that's completely all right. Right, so the high intensity that will give rise to get a brightness, and the control grid is used to control the intensity. The control grid is normally negatively charged, hence will repel a certain amount of electron. So the control grid, which is negatively charged, once an electron will be passing by, it's going to repel the certain amounts of energy. So a certain voltage will be applied to the control grid, right? So what amount of uh, voltage will be applied, right? A certain voltage of that will be the amount of electron that will be repelled. That is, if the control grid is more uh, highly charged, or not charged, but let's say the voltage is high, it's going to repel more electron. But if the voltage is very uh, lower in its value, so it's going to repel less electron. Now, the main question is how we are going to normally focus. When you see here, the first coated, this is uh, happening, uh, for example, in your TV screen, it needs to display uh, a specific color here, or a specific pixel here. We're going to see how does a color CRT works but that will be for the second part of the lecture so how are we going to normally focus that on a specific spot on that screen right so the question is we have the f uh, uh, normally the second anode which is a focusing anode so once an electron is boiled off it's just going to attract it how it is going to attract it is using a positively charged electron and these are going to attract those electrons towards the screen now, it's very important that it hits a screen at a high speed, at a high accelerating speed. How we are going to make it is then we have the accelerating anode. So these are the sense pens that I have normally held. So the second anode is going to heat it up. Now, it's not only that the focusing. Focusing will make it go on a specific spot. That is, focus a beam to go toward the screen. And uh, how to normally deflect it to hit a specific spot? These are the done by the deflecting plates. It's, I if it is a vertical deflection, you're going to see that it's going to be deflected up, down, up, down. And if it is a horizontal deflection, it's going to be deflected uh, normally down. So that depends either to deflect it on the right or to let it go on a specific edge. So we're not going to go inside the main structure over there. So during this phase, energy is re released, uh, causing light to be emitted. Now, how is light normally emitted? We know that what does appear to us is light energy, right? Like we have discussed in the first lecture. Everything, when it comes to color, it's just light that we are seeing. But our colds and rods are going to perceive those colors. Now, how is light emitted? Now, again, to the concepts of what we have discussed about a one white board that is brighter than the other one, in terms of color. The same concept is discussed here. When these phosphor atoms, when these electron beams are going to strike uh, the phosphor-coated layer, they are going to pass a certain amount of kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy is normally going to move them to the higher quantum level. Right, so this will normally cause them to move to a higher quantum level. Right? Now, it comes from the ground state and will be shifted to the right so it has a ground state and uh, maybe uh, it features a higher quantum 
right? From that higher quantum, it's going to come to the ground state. And the more the difference, if it rises, so between these two, if the higher quantum is somewhere like this. Sorry guys, uh, I know it's a bit funny to draw it like this, right? So you can see normally if you draw a line over here, this difference, from here to here and this difference from here to here between these two this one is much larger so which will be lighter up this is known as uh, this one will be known the higher energy level because uh, it's uh, normally from a higher quantum level and then it's going to come to a ground level right so this is a very important concept the larger is going to be the higher quantum level to move on to the ground state so this is how the energy, so during this phase, energy is released, right? So the more it will move to the higher quantum level, and the more time, normally not more time, but the difference between the curve when it moves to the higher quantum level to the ground state level will be the amount of light uh, deposited. Now this is, most of the question comes on it when it comes to resolution. Right, so resolution. So given the screen that you have, the first circuit screen, how you will determine the resolution? So we know that the specific pixels that will what will happen if an electron beam heats up one of the electron beams? In fact you're going to see we have what is known as flickering. Means it, some certain amount of flickering is going to occur. We're going to discuss it in uh, in uh, the difference between raster and uh, random scan where you're going to see that the refresh rate in random scan is much smaller than raster scan and the resolution. So when it comes to maximum number of points that can be displayed on the screen without overlap, right? Why overlap is if you take a an electron beam that has strike twice at the same place, that's going to be a overlap, right? So it's not really a resolution that we can count. So how many dots are appearing, or how many points, or how many spots have been shaded without overlapping is known as resolution. Now how you're going to control the resolution of the screen, that you can use a different types of phosphor, depending on what type of phosphor. And uh, you can use intensity, and how this is controlled by the voltage of the control grid. And then the deflecting plates, how, what kind of deflecting plate is used or you can say the amount of deflection that is being made. Right? Now persistence. You know when normally one of the electron beams strikes a specific spot on the screen. Right? After uh, the electron beam is removed, that is it has to wait for another electron beam to light it up. So the amount of time the uh, emitted light is going to persist, that is going to remain, or the time taken that it will tend to normally decay, that is, finish off uh, displaying, this is known as persistence, right? So the time taken for an emitted light to decay to one-tenth of its value is known as persistence. So how many times it will persist is known as this. Now when it's come to aspect ratio of a picture, it is a ratio of width and height. Now in the next lecture, we are going to continue with random scan system and raster scan system and these two concepts are very very important in computer graphics because these are the two types of displays and in the third lecture we are going to uh, uh, talk about color CRTs, aperture grill, uh, depth penetration or beam penetration then we are going to discuss about uh, shadow mass, how does a shadow mass normally uh, put up the light on the screen. So thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.